Hi! Welcome back to our channel, as in welcome back. Welcome for being here again. I'm so happy to know that nandyan pa rin kayo at nanonood. And so, para naman sa mga first time, hello sa inyo and salamat naman at napadpad kayo sa video na to. Anyway, if you will find this video helpful, paki-like naman and if gusto nyo rin, paki-subscribe and click that bell button, okay? Thank you in advance. Now, simulan na natin yung discussion. First and foremost, bago tayo magpunta sa Article 1252, uh, let me just ask you this question. What are the special forms of payment? Payment pa rin ng discussion natin ha. We are still on the first mode ng extinguishment of obligations sa payment. So, what are the special forms of payment? According, accordingly, there are four. First is yung application of payment or imputation of payment. That is Article 1252 to 1254. Tapos second is yung cession of payment or assignment. That is Article 1255. Tapos meron tayong decision in payment, which is natalakin natin previously, Article 1245. So if you want to, at hindi nyo pa napapanood, you can visit the previous video. Then fourth, Tender of Payment and Consignation. So, Article 12, 56 to Article 12, 61. Basically, itong topic na to ang i-discuss natin yung 1, 2, and 4. Kasi yung 3 na discuss na natin previously. Now, Article 12, 52. So, obviously, this talks about application of payment. But, ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng application of payment? So, application of payment is the designation of the debt to which should be applied when payment is made by a debtor who owes several debts in favor of the same creditor. It is important to know rules on application of payments kasi otherwise, hindi natin malalaman kung alin ba sa maraming utang ang na-extinguish. Or, take note ha, application of payment involves Several debts. Marami. Dalawa or mas marami pa. Tapos, same debtor and creditor. Okay, example. Pogi owes ganda 1 million pesos. Tapos, in another, ano naman, transaction, Pogi owes ganda 2 million pesos. Tapos, in another transaction ulit, Pogi owes ganda 3 million pesos. Pesos, tapos magbabayad na si Pogi on December 15. I mean, on October 15. Tapos yung pera niya is 5 million pesos lang. Not enough to pay all the debts. Paano pa i-apply ang 5 million pesos? Hindi na rin malalaman sa ang utang ba dyan i-apply ang bayad niya. Unless we learn the rules on application of payment. Okay? So, ito muna, requisites of application of payment. Uh, first, there must be one debtor and one creditor. In our example, si Pogi and si Ganda. Si Pogi is the debtor and si Ganda is the creditor. Isa lang. Tapos second, there must be two or more debts. So, sa example nga natin, we have three debts. Third, the debt must be of the same kind. Yes, they are of the same kind, although different yung maturity date. Tapos, fourth, all the debts must be due. E di ba nag-due na nga lahat? October, ano na, October 15 na supposed. So, due na ngayon yung tatlong utang ni Pogi kay Ganda. And fifth, the payment is not enough to extinguish all the debts. Kasi nga, 5 million pesos lang yung pera niya. Ipag e compute mo to, magkano ba to? 3, 4, 5, 6 million pesos. So, kulang. Hindi enough to extinguish all the debt. So, paano ngayon i-apply yung payment ni Pogi kay Ganda? Now, let's go back to Article 1252. Lahat naman ng requisites na to ay nasa kay Article 1252. Ang tanong natin, how application of payment is made? Ang sabi, he 
who has various debts of the same kind in favor of one and the same creditor may declare at the time of making the payment to which of them the same must be applied. So, he who has a various debts, meaning ang taong maraming, ay may maraming utang. So, si debtor. That debtor makes the designation kung sa ang utang niya ibabayad ang pera niya. Okay? And no train sa words na to. At the time of making the payment. So, application must be made at the time when payment by the debtor is made. Okay? During such time na napagbayad niya, hindi after. Pero, paano if hindi ginawa ni debtor? Basta na lang siya nagbayad without designating kung saan utang. Okay? Nagbayad lang si Pogi, hindi niya sinabi kung saan. Doon ba sa first, sa second, or sa third na utang niya? Pag ganyan daw class, ang sagot ay nasa paragraph 2. If the debtor accepts from the creditor a receipt in which an application of the payment is made, the former cannot complain of the same unless there is a cause for invalidating the contract. So, if hindi ginawa ni debtor, the creditor makes it. How? By stating in the receipts that he issues. Unless thou, unless there is a cause for invalidating the contract. If hindi naman pumayag or walang consent ni debtor yung ginawang pag a apply ni creditor ng payment, or if the debtor's consent in accepting the receipt was vitiated, like kung may fraud or my violence, ganon, my forced and intimidation. Pag may ganyan raw, hindi rin valid yung ginawang application ni creditor. Okay? So, hindi nag-object si debtor. Now, with this, nasa third scenario na tayo. Paano pala kung invalid naman ang application ng payment? Or neither the debtor nor the creditor makes the application? Or yun nga, if the application is not valid. So, Kasi di ba yung first scenario, si debtor ang gumawa ng application of payment. Yung second scenario, si creditor. Hindi ginawa ni debtor, ginawa ni creditor. Inisyo, sa receipt na inisyo niya, nilagay niya doon for payment of this debt. Ganon. Tapos yung third scenario, either pareho silang dalawa, hindi nag-apply, or merong nag-apply ng cred, ng at, may, ginawang application of payment, pero invalid. Kasi nga, di ba? Example nga natin yung mga invalid is yung pag yung uh, consent ni debtor is done through fraud or error or violence, yung mga ganon. Yun yung kakasabi lang natin kanina. So, paano? Ano yung mangyayari if ganon? Well, ito na yung sinasabi na application of payment is made by operation of law. So, yung batas na ngayon yung titingnan natin kung saan, yes, kung saan debt yeah, apply yung payment. So, another question. Once the application of payment is made, may it be revocable? Na instead of halimbawa sa first debt daw ya apply ay sa second debt na lang. Biglang nagbago yung isip. Ganon. So, general rule, hindi na pwede. Okay? Unless the parties agrees. In other words, ha? Pwede basta both parties agrees. Payag si debtor at si creditor. Pero take note, kahit pa nagkasundo si debtor or si creditor sa rev revocation ng ginawa nilang application of payment, it will still not be allowed if my third person na mapiprejudiced. Okay? If third person will be prejudiced. Okay? So, that's it. Let's go to Article 12, 53. If the debt produces interest, payment of the principal shall not be deemed to have been made until the interest have been covered. So, this is another very self-explanatory provision. Sa pagbabayad naman talaga, unang babayaran yung interest before yung principal. Pag yung bayad ay hindi sapat. Kasi if Sobra-sobra naman, sapat naman yung bayad, may 6 million pesos naman talaga, or what? So, hindi na kailangan ng application of payment, right? Please note din pala, this provision is mandatory. Hindi pwedeng sabihin ni debtor na gusto niya sa principal muna i-apply yung unang payment niya. 
wag muna sa interest, okay? Pag ganun, pwedeng tumanggi si creditor. Unless, ulit, i-waive ni creditor ang right niya dito. Meaning, okay lang sa kanya. Nung sinabi ni debtor na, pwede bang sa principal i-apply to? Then, umokay naman si creditor. Hindi, walang problema. Basta nag-agree silang dalawa. So, halimbawa, Pogi owes ganda. 10,000 pesos with 12% interest. On the due date, Pogi tenders payment, pero 10,000 pesos lang. Hindi yung 10,000 pesos kulang pa kasi 10,000 pesos nga yung utang with 12% interest. So, dapat nasa 11,200. ba? So, how will you apply the payment? Sabi nga ni Article 12.53, una muna sa interest na 1,200. Then, yung natitirang 8,800 will be applied to the principal amount. So, magkakaroon ng balance na 1,200. Etong 1,200 ay hindi yung interest amount ha. Ito yung principal obligation. Okay? That's it. That's Article 12.53. Now, Article 12.54. When the payment cannot be applied in accordance with the preceding rules, or if application cannot be inferred from other circumstances, the debt which is most onerous to the debtor among those due shall be deemed to have been satisfied. If the debts due are of the same nature and burden, the payment shall be applied to all of them proportionately. So, eto na yung sinasabing by operation of law. Ang ibig sabihin ng article na to, in case walang application of payment na ginawa si debtor and the creditor, then the payment shall be applied to the most onerous debt. Pero kung yung debts are of the same nature and burden, to all of them proportionately. Okay? So, malamang pala, nangungunot na ang inyong mga noo. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng onerous debt on the first place? Or baka naman yes, alam na alam nyo na rin. I don't know, pero sige. Sabi, yung debt is more onerous than the other when it is more burdensome to the debtor. Kung saan ang mas burdensome sa may utang. Malamang naman alam nyo na yung burdensome from the word burden. Anyway, how to determine if ano ang mas burdensome? Actually, there is really no fixed rule in determining which debt is more onerous to the debtor since the, since the condition of being more burdensome is a question of relative appreciation. Hindi mo naman talaga walang general rule or fixed rule. Depende siya as to compare-compare mo kasi yung mga conditions. Diba? So, ano ba yung mga example ng burdensome or onerous debt? Accordingly, ito yung mga decided cases na sinabi ng Supreme Court na mas burdensome daw ang mga to. Sabi, first is, yung interest-bearing debt is more onerous than in an interest-bearing debt. So, kahit pa mas matanda or mas nauna si itong non-interest-bearing debt, mas burdensome talaga yung may interest. Malamang, di ba? Kasi lalaki at lalaki yun if hindi mo nabayaran. So, second naman is, Sabi, yung debt daw as a sole debtor, meaning exclusive debts ni debtor, is more onerous than a solidary debtor. So yun, kung solidary obligation naman, tapos meron kang obligation dito na ikaw lang talaga mag-isa yung debtor, mas onerous daw yun, mas burdensome. Tapos third, all things being equal, so equal lahat Pero, pag ganun, yung older debts are more onerous. Hindi naman, wala namang interest. So, yun. Equal lang, halos pareho lang sila, pero mas nauna tong isa. So, mas onerous daw yung naunang utang. Tapos, fourth, debts secured by a mortgage or by pledge are more onerous than unsecured debts. Siyempre, kasi pag hindi ka nakapagbaya dito, diba, makukuha or mafo-foreclose yung property mo. Tapos, obviously rin naman, in an obligation with penal clause, syempre, mas onerous din siya kaysa sa walang penal clause. So, again, recap lang natin. Rules in case no application of payment has been voluntarily made by the parties. Ang sabi, first, apply to the most onerous debts. 
So this is applicable in case yung due and demandable debts ay of different nature. Tapos, second daw, pag yung sa second paragraph naman, if debts are of the same nature and burden, yung application daw shall be made to all, lahat, tapos proportionately. So, before we proceed sa next provision, siguro may I just remind you na itong rule, more burdensome rule, does not apply when the debtor has made application of payment, okay? Pag may application of payment, yun yung mag apply Itong most burdensome rule, or kung saan, uh, mag apply lang siya pag walang application of payment na ginawa, or if kung meron man, eh, invalid, okay? So, ay, ito pala, before I forget nga din, itong sa proportionately. If debts are of the same nature and burden, application shall be made to all proportionately. Let's just take an example para mas makompute nyo. <laughs> Baka nga expert na kayo. Kaso for me, ganito. Parang malinaw, malinaw kung paano yung ano, computation. Pagbigyan nyo na ako, example tayo dito. Okay? Pogi owes, ganda, 1 million or gawin nating 1.2 million pesos. And another debt naman, he also owes, ganda, 600,000 pesos. So, si Pogi, without making any application of payment, nagbayad ng 300,000 pesos lang. Kay ganda. So, question. How should the payment be applied presuming that both debt are of the same nature? Ang sagot, the payment should be applied proportionately. So, paano ba proportionately? Sa unang utang na 1.2 million pesos and sa 600,000 pesos naman na utang, makikita mo yung ratio nila is 2 is to 1, right? The ratio should be preserved. Hence, yung 300,000 na bayad, dapat 200,000 dun is yung pambayad sa 1.2 million pesos and yung 100,000 pesos lang ang ibabayad mo dun naman sa 600,000 pesos na utang. So, yung 1.2 million pesos ay magiging 100,000 pesos na lang. Tapos, yung pangalawang utang na 600,000 pesos ay magiging 500 pesos na lang. So, yun, proportionately. Malinaw? Yes, siguro. Okay, that is application of payment. Let's now discuss session of payment or payment by session. So, Article 1255. The debtor may cede or assign his property to his creditors in payment of his debts. This session, unless there is a stipulation to the contrary, shall only release the debtor from responsibility for the net proceeds of the thing assigned. The agreements which, on the effect of the session, are made between the debtor and his creditors shall be governed by special laws. Okay. Session or assignment in favor of creditors is another special form of payment. It is the assignment or abandonment of all the properties of the debtor for the benefit of his creditors in order that the creditors may sell those properties and apply the proceeds thereof to the satisfaction of the credits. Okay? So again, this is a process kung saan yung lahat ng property ni debtor ita transfer sa mga creditors para ang mga creditors may sell them. Ibibenta yung kit at yung kita sa pagbibenta ng mga properties ni debtors yun yung ibabayad sa utang. Okay? So ano ba ang requisites para dito? Ito first, there must be Two or more creditors. Dapat maraming creditors. Tapos second, the debtor must be insolvent. So either partially or completely. Basta insolvent na siya kaya nga kukunin na yung lahat ng properties niya para ibenta as payment or pangbayad sa utang niya. Okay? Tapos yung third, the assignment must involve all the properties of the debtor. Okay? Lahat ng property kasi naging insolvent na nga. And fourth, the session must be accepted by the creditors. Siyempre, dahil hindi mo ito maiimpose sa mga unwilling na creditors. 
Okay, so meaning this provision talks about a voluntary or contractual assignment. Kasi, actually, assignment is classified as legal assignment or yung by, from the word itself, by law, by provisions of law or by operation of law yung assignment. Tapos yung voluntary assignment, which, which is eto yon yung voluntary assignment kasi under Article 1255. Okay, so this provision talks about voluntary assignment. So ano nga ba ang effect ng, ano nga ba yung effect po ng assignment or session of payment? Unless there is a stipulation to the contrary, sa assignment, ito ha, the assignment does not make the creditors the owner of the property of the debtor. Okay? From the word itself, assignment, meaning yung creditor will just be merely an assignist. Magiging assignist lang sila. Binigyan lang sila ng authority to sell the properties. Otherwise, if an ownership over the property is transferred to the creditor, then it will be the same as decision in payment, right, under Article 1245. Another effect is that the debtor is released from his obligation, ito ha, only up to that amount of the net proceeds of the sale of the property assigned. So, unless there is a stipulation to the contrary, the balance remains to be collectible, okay? Yung debtor, magiging liable pa rin siya if there be balance. Kung after ibenta lahat ng property niya, kulang pa rin as, so bawayaran pa rin, may utang pa rin siya doon as to those remaining balance na hindi nabayaran. So, example, si Pogi, may ipang siya kay... Bella, kay Pupay, tsaka kay Impiang, in the total amount of 2 million pesos. Pero yung assets niya ay hindi sapat to pay all his debts, right? So, with the consent of this, of his creditors, with the consent of Bella, Pupay, and Impiang, si Pogi, he may assign his property to them. Para ibenta nila yung property, ang lahat ng property ni Pogi, and then to satisfy their credits. So, if the net proceeds sa lahat-lahat ng property ni Pogi is only 1.5 million pesos, so si Pogi ngayon is still liable for the balance of 500,000 pesos. Unless nga, there is a stipulation dun sa, ano, kumbaga na pagkasunduan nila na uh, the assignment shall be in full satisfaction of his debts na. So, now... Before we proceed, mas madali lang naman kasi tong session in payment. But before we proceed, uh, let's ano, distinguish na lang session in payment from decision in payment. Okay, malinaw naman. Both decision in payment and session in payment are substitute forms of payment or performance. Okay? Now, ano yung pagkakaiba nilang dalawa? So, decision in payment, there is usually only one creditor. Pagkang session in payment, dapat two or more creditors talaga. Hindi pwedeng isa lang. Okay? Tapos, uh, kay decision in payment, it does not presuppose the insolvency of the debtor. Okay? Or walang situation na financial difficulties. Kay decision in payment. Basta yung pambayad lang, yung binayad sa utang, is yung property. Pumayag si creditor. ba? Kaya nga, at ito ay governed by the law of sales. Pero dito kay de, uh, session in payment, dapat si debtor is insolvent, either partially or completely. Okay? Para mag, ano, maibenta, kunin lahat ng property niya at ibenta as pambayad dun sa utang, kailangan insolvent si uh, debtor sa session in payment. Now, another is si sa session in payment, hindi ito nag involve ng lahat ng property, di ba? Kahit isang property lang, yung sasakyan niya lang, yung bahay niya lang, ganun. Pero kay session in payment, it extends to all the property of the debtor, okay? Tapos, lastly, si, sa session in payment, si creditor becomes the owner of the thing given by the debtor. Kaya nga, governed by the law of sales. So, magiging owner siya. Pero dito kay session in payment, 
Sa creditors are merely assignees, sabi ko nga kanina, they only acquire the right to sell the thing and apply the proceeds to their credits pro rata. Okay? Proportionately yon sa lahat ng mga creditors. So, that's it. Proceed na tayo kay third. Ito yung last ano, topic, although medyo mahaba kasi it's from Article 12.56 to Article 12.61. So, tender of payment and consignation. So, eto. Article 12.56 If the creditor to whom the tender of payment has been made refuses without just cause to accept it, the debtor shall be released from responsibility by the consignation of the thing or sum due. Okay. First and foremost, let's define terms. Para naman, para magkaintindihan din naman tayo. So, tender of payment. Tender of payment is accordingly the act on the part of the debtor of offering to the creditor the thing or amount due. So, if it is a monetary obligation, din yung pag-o-offer na ibigay yung pera, yung bayad. And if it is an obligation to give something, then yung pagbigay ng ano, yung ano yung object mismo, okay? Tender of payment, it's the act of offering, okay? It's a preparatory act or act preparatory for consignation. Now, yung consignation naman, ano ba yung consignation? Accordingly, it is the act of depositing the thing or amount due with the proper court or judicial authority when the creditor cannot accept or refuses to accept payment. Kasama na rin dun yung performance, okay? So, after mong mag-tender ng payment, the creditor cannot accept or refuses to accept payment. Then, what should you do? Nagbayad ka if ikaw yung debtor. Nagbayad ka na para matapos yung obligasyon mo, ayaw tanggapin. Without or hindi, wala si creditor, hindi niya matatanggap, di ba? So, um, you have an option to consign it with the proper authority. Okay? I-deposit mo doon sa court ang pera or ang bagay para naman ma-extinguish yung obligation mo. Okay? So, that is consignation. Of course, this is done after complying with the formalities required by law. Hindi naman i-deposit na lalo, um, pupunta ka sa court tapos, deposit ko po ito, hindi naman ganun. You have to file a case for that matter, okay? So, it's not his fault and unfair yun sa kanya. The debtor may become liable for damages or interest just because ayaw tanggapin ni creditor ang bayad, right? So, in order to avoid that situation, he must deposit the amount or thing to the court or the proper judicial authority, okay? So now, balikan natin ang provision. Article 1256 says, Si creditor daw to whom payment of pay, um, tender of payment has been made refuses without just cause to accept it. Sabi, si debtor shall be released from responsibility by the consignation of the thing or some due. So, ang gusto ko lang tandaan nyo dito sa first paragraph is, you know, keep in mind, Tender of payment without consignation does not extinguish the debt or the obligation. Consignation must follow. Sabi nga, the debtor shall be released from responsibility. Ano yung magre-release sa kanya from responsibility? It is the consignation of this thing or some due. Kaya nga, tender of payment and consignation. Dapat magkasama yung dalawa. So, example, if si Pogi may utang na 1 million kay Ganda, due today, tapos itong si Ganda nagmamaganda for no reason at all. Ayaw tanggapin ng bayad. O, ano ngayon ang gagawin ni Pogi? So, Pogi must deposit the money in court. And, this is called consignation. Okay? But then, Take note din pala, dapat yung refusal to accept ha, ni creditor is not justified. Kagaya ng example natin, wala lang, gusto lang talaga magmaganda ni ganda. 
ayaw niyong tanggapin yung payment for no reason at all. Kasi, if meron naman palang valid ground si creditor para tanggihan ang bayad ni debtor. Okay? So, anong instances ba na justified yung, ano, yung refusal ni creditor sa tender of payment ni debtor? Kasi pag justified, di, hindi valid yung consignation, di ba? So, pag may mga ganitong instances, valid naman yung pagtanggi. So, hindi proper yung consignation. Kasi pala may grounds or hindi naman without just cost yung refusal the creditor to accept the tender of payment. So, halimbawa, or another one instance is kung yung bayad is, yung bayad ni debtor is not in legal tender. Kung yung binayad pala is promissory note, di ba? Hindi, or kaya kahit check, kasi same, check is not a legal tender. And the fact na previously, tinanggap naman ni creditor, yung ano bayad ni debtor na check it does not mean na ano hindi niya na pwedeng tanggihan ang check the second time kasi nga hindi naman ito legal tender okay another so kung yung tender of payment is yung kulang hindi buo as in yung principal lang yung babayaran ayaw bayaran yung interest oh di may refusal din siya to ano re, um refused or may ground din siya may basis siya for the refusal of ano tender of payment and tsaka third may condition yung bayad na tender of or yung pagtender ng payment kasi dapat it must be unconditional rin okay Please note also that, um, di ba, dapat yung tender of payment, it must be prior bago mag, para magkaroon ng consignation. So, dapat si tender of payment must be proved by the debtor in the proper case. So, kailangan niyang i-prove yan. Pag nag-consign siya ng property or ng bayad sa court, kailangan niyang i-prove doon na nagkaroon ng valid tender of payment. Pero, meron cases kung saan hindi kailangan ang tender of payment. Pwede nang diretso, um, kaagad na, consignation ka na kaagad. And that is provided under the second paragraph ng Article 1256. Okay? Si second paragraph ng Article 1256 provides for situations kung saan kahit na walang tender of payment. Consignation alone, hindi tender of payment and consignation. So, eto, consignation alone, walang previous tender of payment is sufficient. Pag ganito mga cases daw, first, when the creditor is absent or unknown or does not appear at the place of payment, eh, wala si creditor, hindi nagpakita. So, walang tender of payment, pwede nang kaagad consignation. Second, when, uh, when the creditor is incapacitated to receive the payment at the time it is due, di ba? He incapacitated kasi sa ibigay mo sa kanya at mawala niya rin. Hindi naman mag extinguish yung obligation pag ganun. So, you can consign it at least to the court na lang. But note, this is true only. Pwede lang to or applicable lang to if walang legal representative si incapacitated creditor na pwedeng tumanggap sa tender of payment. Kasi pag meron naman at alam ni debtor, like halimbawa, minor, meron namang parents, so pwede namang sa kanila mo ibigay, not necessarily na consignation. Okay? So, pero pag nagbayad ka, tinagihan ng mga parents or ng legal guardian, legal representative, yun, pwede mo i-consign. Tapos, third, when without just cost or late, he refuses to give a receipt, Okay? Ayaw magbigay ng resibo. So, pag ganun pala, pwedeng i-consign na lang ni debtor sa court ang bayad niya. Kasi ayaw magbigay ng resibo. Okay? And fourth scenario, when two or more persons claim the same right to collect. Eh, marami ang nag-claim. Kung kanino, hindi mo alam ngayon, hindi mo ma-determine kung sino sa kanila ang babayaran or sino ba talaga ang nagsasabi ng totoo na sa kanya dapat magbayad or ibigay yung bagay na yon. Okay? So, dahil they claim, maraming nag-claim, ang gawin mo ay eh, consignation. Punta ka dun sa court, tapos let them, ano, settle their claims sa court kung sino yung manalo, at least sa kanya mapupunta. Okay? And lastly, sabi ni Article 1256, uh, when the title of the obligation has been lost. Okay? Meaning, yung written document na wala. 
So, much better, i-deposit mo na lang din sa court yung bagay or yung bayad. So, wait pala before I forgot. Paano pala if after nag-tender ng payment, which the creditor refused to accept without justifiable cause, it was only much later, ang tagal pa, before consignation was made by the debtor. Say, after ilang years pa, bago niya ginawa yung consignation, pag ganito daw, the interest should run. Okay, so Article 1257 na tayo. Sabi ni Article 1257, in order that the consignation of the thing due may release the obligor, it must first be announced to the persons interested in the fulfillment of the obligation. The consignation shall be ineffectual if it is not made strictly in consonance with the provisions which regulate payment. Ang sabi, para marilis daw si debtor or obligor sa kanyang obligation, dapat mayroong prior notice to persons interested. So, sino ba itong mga persons interested? Sila yung mga guarantors, mortgages, mga solidary debtors and creditors, okay? So, pag walang prior notice sa kanila, ang consignation daw is void, okay? Hindi valid. But before anything else, ano nga ba ang essential requisites ng consignation? First, sabi dapat may existence of a valid debt. So, dapat may utang, not just a mere redemption or option. Dapat valid debt talaga. Meaning, hindi nag-prescribe na yung utang. And it is not founded on illegal cause or consideration, okay? Basta, check if meron bang valid debt. Okay? Hindi void ang utang. So, first talaga, existence of a valid debt. Second, valid prior tender. Unless tender is excused. So, unless kasama siya dun sa situations nung yung diriskas natin kanina, wherein hindi kailangan yung tender under the previous provisions, ba? So, eto, if required yung tender, dapat merong valid prior tender. Okay? And para merong valid tender payment, I mean valid tender of payment, Dapat, di ba, yung tender of payment mo is, yung ina-offer mong pambayad is dapat is yung legal tender or for full satisfaction ng debt talaga, not merely partial, yung mga ganun. Okay? Tapos, third, third requisites ng consignation, prior notice of consignation. Okay? Ito is dapat before the deposit. Ito yung third requisites. Ito yung sinasabi ko rin kanina. Diba? Na the consignation must first be announced to the persons interested. Without such notice, yung consignation as a payment is void. Ang purpose daw dito is to give the creditor, yung mga persons interested, a chance to reconsider, right? A chance to reconsider yung previous refusal. And so, maiiwasan yung litigation na, ano, na umabot pa talaga sa court, Okay. So, yung pagbibigay ng notice can actually be done simultaneously with the tender of payment. Kasabay ng tender. Hindi kayo naman necessary na hiwalay pa na nag-tender, umuwi ka muna sa inyo or what. Pwede din naman kasi by letter. So, pag nang nagpadala ka ng letter, nang nag-tender ka ng payment, tapos nilagay mo na rin doon na kung hindi nila tatanggapin, you will be consigning this to the court. Ganon. Okay? Tapos, fourth. Actual consignation. After ng notice, ini yung actual na talaga. Ito yung pagdi-deposit sa proper court or judicial authority. Yung mismong object that is due. Hindi pwedeng iba. Okay? And of course, it must also be accompanied by a proof that the tender has been duly made. So, pag na-deposit na yan, it will be considered as property in custodia lihes and will therefore be exempted from attachment and execution. Yun yung effect pag na-deposit na siya. Okay, so after ng actual consignation, ano yung kasunod? Dapat meron pang subsequent notice of consignation. So, meaning, merong dalawang notice. Isa, prior sa consignation, and isa na namang notice after the deposit. 
So, this is required under the second paragraph ng 1258, which we will be discussed or which we will discuss shortly after this article. Okay? So, mandatory din ito. And so, if walang subsequent notice, the consignation is void. Okay? So, ito naman, second paragraph muna tayo ng Article 1257. Daanan lang natin before we go to Article 1258. Ang sabi, the consignation shall be ineffectual if it is not made strictly in consonance with the provisions which regulate payment. It's as simple as yung consignation must also comply with the provisions on payment. Yung sa rules ng payment, like it should be made in legal tender, okay? Basta yung na-discuss na rin natin in our previous videos. Now, let's continue muna with Article 1258. So, consignation shall be made by depositing the thing due at the disposal of judicial authority before whom the tender of payment shall be proved in a proper case and the announcement of the consignation in other cases. The consignation having been made the interested parties shall also be notified thereof. So, this provision actually just answers the question, how consignation is actually made? Paano ba? Study, it shall be made by depositing the things due at the disposal of judicial authority. Tapos daw, there must be proof that tender had been previously made and Meron ding notice to the interested persons that consignation will be made and also after the consignation was made. Well, yun pa rin yung nasabi na natin kanina. So, Article 1259. Sabi, uh, 1259. The expenses of consignation when properly made shall be charged against the creditor. So, well, dapat lang din naman talaga na i-charge the creditor. Diba? Yung expenses ng consignation dahil kung hindi rin naman with his fault, hindi rin naman naabot to that point. Diba? Had the creditor accepted the tender of payment, di wala naman sanang consignation, right? That's it. That's Article 1259. Sabi lang yung mag-bear na expenses for the consignation should be the creditor. Sabi niya, it's a charge daw by creditor yung expenses na, na incur dahil sa consignation. Okay, Article 1260. Once the consignation has been duly made, the debtor may ask the judge to order the cancellation of the obligation before the creditor has accepted the consignation or before a judicial declaration that the consignation has been properly made, the debtor may withdraw the thing or the sum deposited, allowing the obligation to remain enforced. Ganito, what is the effect once the consignation has been duly made? Okay, ano ba yung effect po pag na-declare na yung consignation has been duly made? Number one, the debtor may ask the judge to order the cancellation of the obligation. And so, yung running of interest din is suspended. Yun. Okay, so pwede na i-cancel yung obligation niya. Pero sabi ni Article 1260, bago pa man daw ma-accept ni creditor ang consignation, or bago pa yung judge nag-declare na yung consignation was properly made, pwede daw na ma-withdraw ni debtor ang bagay or yung pera na na-deposit niya, okay? If that's the case, yung obligation niya to pay the creditor will remain enforced kasi binidraw niya. Okay, so, eto. It is the debtor's right as a matter of right yun na pwede niyang i-withdraw prior to the acceptance ni creditor or prior doon sa declaration ng court na the consignation was properly made. Okay? May right pa talaga siya to withdraw that thing or that amount na dineposit niya. After all, siya pa rin naman ang owner ng thing or ng pera na dineposit, right? Pag ganyan naman, hindi si creditor ang mag-bear ng expenses sa debtor. Kasi although nag-ano nag, siya ng consignation, pero winidraw niya, kinuha niya yung pera or yung thing. So, since ginawa niya yun, si creditor ay hindi, hindi macha-charge sa kanya yung expenses sa consignation. Kung hindi, dapat si debtor 
Okay? If nag-withdraw siya. However, listen carefully. Pagtapos na, meaning, si creditor has either, ito ha, either si creditor has accepted the consignation or the court has already declared it to be proper, hindi na as a matter of right na pwedeng i-withdraw ni debtor yung thing or yung amount na dineposit. Okay? Pero, pwede pa rin niya yung makuha or ma-withdraw, pero dapat meron ng consent or dapat i-authorize na ni creditor. Okay? So, question. Kasi ba diba, may right nga si debtor to withdraw the thing, the thing bago man, bago pa ma-accept ni creditor ang consignation or bago pa yung judge nag-declare na yung consignation was properly made. Now, question. How can the creditor prevent the debtor from exercising the right to withdraw the consigned? Diba? Kasi nag... Paano mo mapipigilan? Baka i-withdraw yung pangba, yung dineposit dyan na pera or yung bagay. Okay? Ang, obviously, ang sagot lang dyan is by immediately accepting the consignation. Pag tinanggap mo na kaagad, itapos na, hindi niya na pwedeng ma-withdraw yun. Okay? How about if yung consignation was improperly made? What is the effect? Number one, the obligation remains Dahil yung consignation is not effective as a pay payment. So, the consignation would produce no effect. So, ang obligation ay nandun pa rin to pay to the creditor or to deliver such thing kung ano man yung obligation mo. Okay? Tapos, same din in case of dismissal of the case. So, kung yung case for the consignation ay dismiss ng court, consignation would produce no effect. Now, proceed na tayo kay Article 1261 para matapos na to. Medyo mahaba na yung discussion. So, Article 1261, if the consignation having been made, the creditor should authorize the debtor to withdraw the same, he shall lost every preference which he may have over the thing. The co-debtors, guarantors, and sureties shall be released. Okay? Sabi, yung consignation having been made, meaning either... The creditor has already accepted or the court has already approved the consignation na declare niya, na, niya na properly made yung ano, consignation. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. Pwede pa rin ma-withdraw ni debtor if authorized ni creditor. Pwede niya pang i-withdraw yung dineposit niya. So, yun nga, ang sabi ko kanina, hindi na as a matter of right ni debtor. Okay? Ang thing ay magiging parang privilege na lang kasi dapat may authorize na lang ni creditor. Okay? Pero ang sabi, pag pumayag daw si creditor, ano ang epekto? Obviously, the obligation remains. Nandun pa rin. May obligation pa rin si debtor kay creditor. And, eto mas importante. Si creditor loses any preference. Okay? Mawawala yung priority over the thing. And ito pa, another effect, co-debtors, guarantors, and sureties are released. So, unless nagbigay din sila ng consent na i-withdraw ni debtor yung deposit. So, example, so, Poggy is indebted to Ganda in the sum of 10,000 pesos. Tapos si Beauty ang guarantor. On the due date of the obligation, Poggy tendered payment. Pero si Ganda, refused to accept. So, dahil ni refused niya i-accept ni Pogi, I mean, ni Ganda yung bayad ni Pogi, Pogi made a consignation. Nag-comply naman siya sa lahat ng requirements, okay? Granting he made the proper consignation. And so, after the court cancelled the obligation, Pogi withdraw the deposit after securing the consent of Ganda. So, merong consent si Ganda na kinuha niya, winidraw niya yung deposit niya, pambayad, sana kay Ganda. So, pumayag nga si Ganda. Tapos, later on, si Pogi ay naging insolvent. So, wala na. Paano na ngayon babayaran si Ganda? So, question. Can Ganda now proceed against Beauty, yung guarantor, for payment of the 10,000 pesos? Ito. Sabi, di ba? If the consignation having been made, the creditor should authorize the debtor to withdraw the same, 
he shall lost every preference which he may have over this thing. So, at ito pa, the, the co-debtor, guarantors, and sureties shall be released. So, under Article 1261, Ganda, as a creditor, shall lost whatever preference he may have over the amount, and that si beauty, as a guarantor, shall be released. Okay? Thank you for watching. We have to end this kasi magwa one hour na rin. Thank you and see you on our next video.